So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Wagner, Wagner Zola. I work at Federal University of Paraná in Brazil. And this is a joint work with my friend, my colleagues, Vandery Eduardo and Luis Bona. So uh, our motivation will be to use uh, cryptographic file systems and, uh, uh, in, uh, in encryption uh, in a uh, CTR mode. So the, the rationale uh, I'll be talking about will be on cryptographic file system, CBC versus CTR encryption mode. Uh, file system that I use will be NKFS, which is in user space, and a GPU library called uh, WiseLib. So uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be talking about the CTR encryption mode applied to CFS, uh, and I in an implementation of a file system called NKFS++. Uh, uh, we need to talk about the spawning of parallel encryption tasks in NKFS++, uh, the challenges of organizing and, and managing the encryption contexts, con con contexts and uh, we're going to analyze the, exper the per experimentally analyze the performance of this file system. So, continuing on my, on our mo motivation, uh, it is on security and data storage, especially especially in the, in the era of computing in the cloud. So, uh, a natural evolution would be integration of encryption in file systems. Uh, um, uh, transforming like the file system and uh, 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 cryptographic file system. So we use symmetric block ciphers for good uh, security and, and speed ratio. The problems are that larger data volumes uh, uh, plus faster media and alternative fast uh, ciphers and larger keys for, for encryption increase the CPU utilization. So what we wanted is using parallel processes for the, this task. Example, for example, with GPUs or with multi-core processors. Uh, previous study of acceleration of AES in GPU uh, we had this uh, GPU kernel called WISE. WISE is for the W is for warped eyes, and the WiseLib uh, um, explores the CTR mode. It's a counter mode. Uh, I'm going to be explaining this further later. Um, sorry. And uh, this defines priorities for the generation of encryption masks. This this lib. And my current work here. Uh, is to explore the advantage of CTR mode in the context of a CFS. With parallel multi-core or, multi or many-core processors, but uh, in the current work, it, uh, we are using GPU for the cryptographic functions and to get higher throughput with more uh, uh, efficient CPU usage. Um, we would like to extend to other accelerator and, and multi-core or even heterogeneous architectures. Now, for a cryptographic file system, uh, this is integrated in the, at different levels, system levels. Uh, at user space, we have uh, a fuse-based uh, CFS. At kernel space, uh, we have uh, CFS encryption uh, file system uh, working with VFS and a kernel space, we can have something like the mcrypt that uh, encrypts at I.O. blocks level. And, uh, sorry. So, NKFS uses lib libfuse, which is the base file system we use to experiment in this, uh, in this work. Usually, uh, uh, encryption file system works with a CBC mode of operation, which is detailed in this document from NIST, and it uses uh, sequential encryption, which has uh, data dependency. 
and has a security requirement, which is uh, it is necessary to use unpredictable init initialization vector. So at each encryption, we need an IV, which is the initialization vector, and a key. Now, we wanted to work with CTR mode, which is parallelizable and uh, ha has a possibility of encryption anticipation, uh, which means we can create the uh, encryption masks in advance, and has a different secu security requirement, requirement which, which is a uniqueness requirement. It is necessary to use a given key and IV pair only once at any encryption. So the IV in this case is called a nonce because it's, it's, only, only, it's only used once. Now let's go back to NKFS file system. It, has, uh, it is based on Fuse, works in user space. Now this facilitates the development and testing and allows us to uh, do easier GPU library integration in NKFS++. Uh, uh, as CUDA API is using, uh, is in use, user space and LibFuse is also in user space. If we were using a kernel space module uh, for the file system, we needed an intermediate processor, a process, sorry, and uh, would add more complexity, more latency. Now, uh, let's uh, take a look at another, other uh, NKFS features. Uh, uh, it uses OpenSSL uh, with CPU, and, and uh, uh, the file uh, is encrypted in data blocks and uses a CVC for each data block. So uh, the unpredictability requirement, well, let's see a file format for this, uh, for, for this file system. It has a, an IV for, an, for, a file, for each file, and it has a volume key uh, for the volume, a volume IV, and uh, uh, an, uh, an IV for, the, for, for each block is, uh, is calculated. So the data block IV is calculated dynamically uh, with an encryption hash uh, to meet the requirement uh, of unpredictability. And this is uh, reusable at, at the block, at any uh, block rewriting. Now let's talk about uh, GPU encryption acceleration. It's extensively studied at various, at various symmetric ciphers. Uh, uh, related work um, functions use, uh, ha has, used, uh, has been used in user space and various projects and in kernel space. But usually uh, they're using CBC plus the GPU. And only, uh, this only compensates for larger requests as uh, larger requests such as larger than 16 kilobytes. Now applied to CFS, there, we, we know of, uh, we don't know any of uh, previous works that have exploited the benefits of CTR. So CTR mode, why, why we use that? that it, uh, aside from this, is parallel, parallelizable. It allows us, us what we call speculative encryption, creation of masks ahead of time. So we do the uh, shore operation in the CPU, which avoids uh, the CPU to GPU data transfer, and, and this mode is as safe as CBC. Now, the previous uh, library we had uh, done available uh, uh, with, uh, is Wiselib. It reduces uh, GPU processing complexity by aggregating a small uh, four kilobyte contexts. Uh, and by this aggregation, it, it produces fewer uh, wise kernel activations and higher throughput and, uh, and, and allows more control in the order of production of masks by using priorities. Now, the challenges of using CTR and CFS is uh, that each recording and rewriting of a block requires a new nonce, and those, uh, this is due to the uniqueness requirement. The problem is that we need to store the nonces 
for each block, a new 128-bit uh, uh, number. As the same unique NOS is ne uh, uh, it needs to be used uh, for uh, any decryption. So there is an overhead of nonce storage that could uh, uh, negatively impact CFS performance. The nonce storage and the access mechanism and the granularity is important for performance. So here is what we call uh, in, in NKFS++ the end nodes, uh, which is the nonce nodes. It's similar to the idea of the um, uh, inodes in, in, in Unix. Uh, we use a global counter for the, for the file, for, for the volume, and uh, an occupation mar map for, for nonce nodes. This is for small files. For larger files, like larger than 64 kilobytes, we need, uh, we use a, a, a separate file uh, for, only for the nonces for huge files. Now for, for small files, we need this uh, nonce nodes. And uh, this nonce nodes is separated, uh, what I call the nonce node format is, uh, we define here an inode number and uh, a 116 byte nonce for each block in, in, that re in, that, uh, in that region of the file. So this is the, NOS uh, bits. Now, the challenge of using the speculation and the encryption is how to manage the encryption contexts, how to organize the encryption contexts uh, with the, within the file system application, and how to use these contexts uh, in different uh, CFS operations. When is the best time to trigger the generation of the encryption masks? Uh, when is the time to define the context? How to take advantage of the priority feature on the GPU library? So first, we define this context, write context pool, which is maintained for encryption writing. This is used for sequential and for random writing. And uh, uh, this, there's only one pool needed for, for this, the whole CFS volume. Uh, and the context, uh, the context of this pool is uh, initially defined at the mount operation. And uh, the, constants, the, the context are redefined as masks are consumed or as um, portions of data blocks are, are written or rewritten. Uh, rewritten. Uh, this is implemented as a virtual circular queue, and there's no storage uh, needed. We just have uh, the, the here uh, shown a context before uh, block encryption and after. So you have this context with eight, uh, con uh, I'm sorry, the pool with eight contexts, and we have as access the index, uh, the block zero, which is index zero. And here is the IV of this block. I'm sorry. And uh, let's suppose uh, we're going to then access uh, block one in, in a sequential uh, writing. Then um, we just do a rotation in the index number. And then we get from the pool the, the IV for the next um, for the next uh, encryption. And we start, we spawn the, the encryption uh, uh, mask creation for uh, zero, which is available. When we do this by just doing a rotation on the index numbers. Now the context pool for reading uh, 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 is shown here. Uh, this is used for sequential and random reading and, and has one, one context per file, open file. Uh, context, and so in this way, this is open. Uh, when we open the, the file, the, you need to define the context pool for this reading. And it works similarly. Contexts are redefined as masks, masks are consumed. 
And uh, what we do with priorities is that uh, uh, we spawn newer priorities uh, uh, according to the distance that we, we feel that the, the data is going to be accessed. So if we, if we have detected the uh, sequential reading, then uh, we're going to dispatch uh, the new contexts with the correct uh, decreasing priorities. So that when we need the masks, uh, they are ready first when I need it first. Now, this is a context uh, pool for decryption shown here, uh, a, a different scenario, which is different from sequential, uh, when, I, when I'm doing a, a random read. And in two, in two different cases, the first case is when uh, we, we have a window that you are looking at the file, and then you move to a different window. Uh, what you do, we have to do, you have to restart all the context pools. So it has a higher overhead. So we call this the speculation overhead. And if, if we move to a, like, a slightly uh, inside the window, then we can restart fewer mask creations. Restart, uh, and, and have to redefine the priorities. Now, for performance analysis, we have um, compared this with NKFS, EcryptFS in CBC mode and with CPU. And uh, NKFS++ works with uh, uh, CPU and GPU as the uh, shore operation is done in, in the CPU. And we also have compared this with AES, AES and I uh, with EcryptFS in kernel mode. For um, micro benchmarks, we have measured uh, a, 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 a huge file, like a not so huge, a 16 gigabyte file, uh, with requests of 4, 64, and 128 kilobytes. For micro benchmarks, we have used the synthetic workload of FileBench with a file server and a web server. .f is from, from FileBench. We have used Linux, uh, laptop, this is a high-end laptop, and then we tested two uh, different scenarios, with a SSD disk and with a RAM disk uh, to, to test a lower latency device, to simulate a lower latency device. We have used LibFuse uh, 2.9, OpenSSL, WiseLib2, and X2 BaseFS. So uh, NVIDIA G4 mobile is used, was used. The, uh, here you see that uh, from the sequential benchmark reading uh, in decryption, um, uh, we have uh, gain in throughput. Uh, uh, when in, and uh, when we move to, uh, from the SSD scenario to the memory scenario, which l with lower uh, latency, we're comparing the, the regular CBC version and the, using the CPU. Uh, this gets higher throughput and, and lower, uh, and also efficiency in CPU use. Now, for the sequential write, we also have gains comparing to original NKFS and CBC. Uh, either in throughput, the green are grain, are, are gains, and uh, we also have uh, uh, use efficiency. Now another micro benchmark for random read. Uh, random read, uh, we got uh, also a, a less performance gains, but uh, still we got performance uh, gains and uh, a little decrease in, in use, uh, CPU use because when we move, as we talked about, when we move from uh, one, one region of the file to another uh, for a far, far position, then uh, this, uh, you, you get speculation costs and then you, you decrement in throughput here. Now, um, for random write, incredibly, we can get, uh, throughput uh, enhancements, and uh, G CPU efficiency use. Now, for the macro benchmarks, the file uh, well, we see here 
the, the, C, the GPU is uh, here, the percent is the usage of GPU. The GPU is most of the time uh, doing nothing. 12% uh, uh, is what we get. So there is space for, uh, uh, we only test this on, on SSD for now. There's space for um, putting more threads, or actually we were in a, in a laptop, putting more threads in a higher high-end server, for example, and the GPU would be up to the job. Now we compared with uh, AcryptFS in, in kernel space, which is the uh, yellow, uh, uh, orange type of, of bar. Uh, this, uh, we, we get uh, competitive also with uh, AESNI in kernel space. So here is a web server, and uh, we got put good performance. The web server um, has a different workload, and uh, the GPU usage increases a little bit in, in blue here in the table. And, uh, but still we have gains uh, in, the, in the macro benchmark uh, session, uh, I mean uh, experiment. So our conclusions is that uh, we had various gains in throughput uh, and, and uh, CPU utilization in macro benchmarks and micro benchmarks. Uh, this is competitive even with AES and I, which is a hardware accelerator and uh, accelerated uh, encryption and, and has very low latency compared to uh, dispatching a GPU kernel. So uh, I guess uh, aggregation of the contexts is, is, is really working for us. So the main contributions we have here is that uh, we have shown the advantages of applying CTR mode for CFS. Uh, we have explored uh, additional advantages, uh, advantages of uh, CTR mode, and uh, that wisely be as efficiently applied to GPU, uh, to, to CFS. Now, GPU uh, processing can significantly increase throughput, uh, even for small contexts and for small data, data, data uh, chunks. For future work, we want to work on the performance analysis of actual loads and uh, for better testing and creating new techniques for the context pools. Also, we want to extend to other accelerators and multi-core and do it uh, in a heterogeneous fashion. Uh, we want to explore CTR also in kernel space, either with DM crypt or other crypto API file systems in, in kernel space. So this is, this is what, what we get. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions. Uh, Ethan Miller, UC Santa Cruz. So, why did you not test against counter mode on CPU? I mean, people have been using counter mode for encryption. Uh, we, you just, for we just didn't have time. We have to change the wise leap to do that. Wise leap was, uh, uh, we had a first version when we created wise leap. Now, now we had this second version that works with priorities. So we had to dispatch things and work with priorities in, with the GPU. Doing this work with the CPU would be, would be a, a lot of work, uh, different work and different optimizations for, for diff, different setups. So we want to do that in the future, but uh, as we said in, in here in the future work, uh, this is something that we need to do and also there's not one competing with the other. We feel that we could do some, some stuff in the GPU and some stuff in the CPU. If AES, AES NI is there, hardware acceleration is there for us. Where is better to use hardware acceleration with low latency? And where can we spawn jobs for other processors that has uh, higher latencies? So we need to do this uh, heterogeneous way in the future. I only ask because a quick Google search, and I know because many companies use counter mode in software already, 
A uh, quick Google search turns up that encryption is about 4x faster with counter mode than CBC mode on an x86 with the instructions. Yeah, I know ES that. And uh, I plan to use uh, this uh, on the CPU also, with the a, 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 which is available in the processor, which, uh, wh whatever is available in the processor. Um, actually, a, a question from, uh, for the... Uh, storage people like me. Um, so why is it that, you know, why use, what is the difference between counter mode and CBC mode? Now, the CBC, the CBC is this, uh, it encrypts uh, one a chunk, a little chunk, like 16 byte, uh, at a time, the AES do, does this. One small chunk at a time, which is the encryption block, not a data block, okay? And it has a chaining uh, of uh, the, the, when, when the ciphertext is produced, this is used as, a, a, this is used as an IV, an, an initialization vector for the encryption of the next mode. So this is uh, sequential and has like uh, different, uh, uh, security requirements for using the, the, the first initialization vector. Also, we, we don't write in here, but uh, if you produce an error, uh, a reading error, for example, at some uh, encryption block, then it propagates. Now, for the CTR mode, this is totally parallelizable, and uh, uh, we have a different key, encrypt, uh, key IV requirement for this to be safe. Okay, thank you. I, I know this isn't quite on point for your work, but I'm curious, you showed all these performance numbers comparing the, the various crypto schemes. How, how do they compare to running clear text and giving up on that? For running what, for sorry? For not encrypting at all. Like how much do you, do you lose in the best case by encrypting as opposed to just not running, running a traditional file system? Oh, case? I see. Um, and it's just curiosity thing. Uh, well, we got this, uh, but I don't recall. Uh, we, in the previous work, like uh, uh, when we started this, we started comparing. But uh, since in this paper, uh, in this work, we couldn't have space to add these numbers, but uh, I, can, uh, I can provide that with you. Okay, for I was you. just curious. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.